Shifting gears a bit, you have another uh, another piece, uh, recent piece, which appeared in The Nation, uh, I believe, where you talked about a guy named Paul uh, Singer, who is a very successful hedge fund guy in New York, who's known as a big Republican donor, uh, and is sort of getting somewhat of a reputation as you know being one of these kind of big money guys who wants to moderate the GOP, and essentially that's because I think he has a son who is a gay man. He's very supportive of marriage equality. Um, now, one part of the, you know, other part of him, obviously, is that he's a unrepentant and, you know, ultra right wing when it comes to economic policies and kind of guarding his economic interests through uh, campaign contributions. But you've also raised the fact that he also, uh, you know, more quietly, perhaps, but similar to other mega donors like a Sheldon Adelson, as an example, has an incredibly far-right view of the Middle East and is actually ad agitating for really hawkish policies towards Iran. So kind of, you know, explain that for us. Right. Well, Paul Singer, uh, he's the head of Elliott Management, that's the name of his hedge fund, uh, has, has, according to a number of documents I've looked at, been one of the largest, if not the largest donors in certain instances, to various groups that have been pushing for uh, very hawkish policies with Iran. Uh, first and foremost is probably the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Uh, documents that I'd published in a previous article show that between 2008 and 2011, he was their second largest donor after Home Depot founder Bernard Marcus. Um, and FDD, uh, who also receives money from Sheldon Adelson, who advocated a preemptive nuclear attack on Iran. That would harm um, no one, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, in it the would, middle of the desert. Yeah, so yeah, May, okay. maybe a, a, a animal, and it was funny because I think he actually said maybe a rattlesnake would die or something, but but that was right. also inaccurate because, of course, there aren't rattlesnakes there. But at any right, rate. It may have been projection yeah. because he was thinking Nevada. Um but, Sheldon uh, Adelson wants but, to so, nuke Nevada. That's wow, El, uh, Eli. You're reporting <laughs> <laughs> new, new. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah. So go well, ahead. I mean, hey, you know, yeah, I've been to Nevada. It's okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, but he uh, but so FDD is really 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 out there. That the, the, they've been consistently advocating preventive strikes against around nuclear facilities. Um, right in the middle. Right as uh, you know, the first touch and go negotiations were going during uh, in October 2013 between Iran and 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 the P5 plus one, the United States. Um, uh, we have FDG director Mark Dubowitz and, uh, and their fellow royal Mark Gerecht writing in the Washington Post that what we need right now is more sanctions. Right. Um, and we also have them, uh, and we also have uh, Singer supporting outfits like the American Enterprise Institute, which uh, is promoted very. In the, Far, 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 more so, far more so probably than any other organization, the invasion of Iraq, um, and the Jewish Institute for National Security Affairs, which in March of last year uh, made the case that taking military action off the table against Iran undermines all other options short of war, which is uh, at least a distinction I can't really understand. So, uh, but I think kind of the point I was really trying to get at with this with this article is that. Uh, you know, all the attention on Paul Singer, and for that matter, there's another hedge funder who he's worked very closely with, Dan Loeb, um, is, is focusing on the fact that they, that they want to be known as the Wall Street-friendly, uh, socially progressive face of the Republican Party. Right. Uh, they are the version of the Republican Party that uh, uh, fiscal conservatives in Manhattan can get behind. Uh, but what's not being reported is that while they might have a fairly progressive social agenda and a traditional uh, fiscally conservative uh, economic policies, their foreign policy agenda is way out there. And that's something that's being overlooked. Yeah, I, you know, as, as, as actually – and that's a really crucial point. And before we wrap up, I mean, I, I think one of the things that I really appreciate – uh, among many, obviously, about your reporting, specifically with regards to uh, people like Paul Singer, is to what extent to which, even after all of these, if we're going to, you know, we could use the shorthand sure, of neoconservative foreign policy or whatever, it, after so many just blunders and failures and really just kind of robustly catastrophic decision making and advocacy in foreign policy that has been endlessly contradicted in just you know empirically and you know analytically 
it, it seems like this still isn't reported or thought of as being quite that extreme. So even if you were to read a, a piece about Singer that was just kind of summarizing him, uh, you know, doing a, a, a just trying to do a kind of neutral job, you might say you would say like, OK, he's you know, he's again, socially progressive very pro Wall Street, a Wall Street man, and he's, you know, he takes a tough line in the Middle East or something. You know, one of these kind of generic sort of taglines that don't really mean much and actually conceal what you're saying, which is really radical extremist views in the Middle East, even after, uh, you know, all of the uh, blunders that those ideas have already taken us through. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think I mean I think there's a couple things in play here. One is that uh, Americans, for the most part, uh, foreign policy is not a top line issue for most for most people. So it's easier to get away with having a radical foreign policy agenda if you have more moderate or or at least mainstream uh, economic or social views. Um, and certainly, people like Singer fall within that within that sphere. Um, you know, his 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 economic agenda is very pro Wall Street. Uh, it's very anti regulatory. Um, while a lot of people would disagree with that, uh, it's not too far outside of the mainstream. Whereas uh, the point is, is that uh, if you uh, advocate for uh, for war, uh, historically, uh, certainly the past. Um, uh, 12 years have shown us, uh, you can get away with it with very little uh, consequence. And that's to the second point is, is the media's fault. Because in profiling somebody like Singer, and the reason I wrote this piece, is that there was recently uh, a Washington Post profile of him. And it was a lengthy, lengthy profile buried two-thirds of the way down was like uh, three sentences about his foreign policy views, which they characterized as staunchly pro-Israel, right. um, being on the board of the Republican Jewish Coalition, um, and a member of a large American delegation that went to celebrate Israel's 60th anniversary in 2008. Well, I mean, how how much more can you can you can you distill, or not even distill, but practically mislead your readers about this person's views uh, and and the positions that they're advocating for in terms of U.S. foreign policy? Um, yeah, sure, there's an Israel tie-in, but the truth is that this guy supports organizations that uh, historically have pushed for war, uh, that have pushed for unnecessary wars in the case of the invasion of Iraq, um, and have uh, gone on to hire the people out of the George W. Bush administration who played a central role uh, in executing that war. Right. And, yeah. Well, yeah. So they could just say, and parenthetically, he uh, advocates for policy that could lead to a, you know, complete global meltdown emanating out of the Middle East. And he also took a trip to Jerusalem. OK, back to uh, to uh, marriage equality. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <Exactly. laughs> Eli, Eli Clifton, uh, these both of these pieces, uh, the one on uh, Paul Singer is in The Nation uh, and the uh, piece on uh, the pharma deal is in Salon. Uh, Eli Clifton wait for it, is a reporting fellow with the Investigative Fund at the Nation Institute. Thank you so Nailed much it. for joining us today. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks so for much. having me. Thanks, Eli.